So, Intel Raptor Lake, and when Intel sends these boxes out for the media to review, there's two CPUs inside, i5 and i9. And that's been the case, you know, from 11th gen and 12th gen, 13th gen. But the thing that's never in there is this one here. This is the 13700K i7, and the thing is, this is actually an i9. I mean, it's literally 12900K, but better and cheaper. So as a creator, you should be very excited because this guy is the dark horse of the 13th gen. Let's talk. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So I finally managed to benchmark this CPU. And to me, this is my favorite one of the bunch. And I think for a lot of creators, this is the one that they're going to be going for. So if you've had the 12900K in your basket to purchase that one, then uh, pause that for a second, wait till the end of the video, and then you'll see you might want to put the 13700K in the basket because it's cheaper. So the CPUs we're going to be comparing is the 13700K and then the 7900X from AMD because that's the direct competitor and uh, not so much on the price but in terms of where it lines up and then the 12700K from previous generation and then 12900K. Now this time it is interesting to look at the specs because if you look at the 13700K and then 12900K you realize they are literally the same CPU by the core. It's got eight performance cores and eight efficiency cores of Obviously one is i7 and one of them is i9 from previous generation. The turbo frequency that the 13700K can reach is 5.4 GHz, whereas the 12900K can go 5.2 GHz. So gaining 200 MHz on the i7 as well. Everything else looks very, very similar, but the L2 cache. On 12900K, it's 14 MB, whereas on the 13700K, it's 24 MB. Bytes. The base power is the same 125 watts, but the max power uh, that it can draw from the CPU or from the socket when Cinebench R23 is utilized is 240 watts on the 13700K, even though Intel advertises 253 watts being pulled from there. But the motherboard's thinking, do you know what? We've got better voltages for that. We don't need to pull that much. We're still going to achieve that type of score. So even better, right? The 12900K pulls 223 watts according to my testing, but Intel advertises it to pull 241 watts or so on. The iGPU is the same and the process node is exactly the same as well. If we're looking at the price point, then the 13700K is even more impressive compared to the competition. Obviously the AMD 7900X is more than $100 more expensive in the CPU department and $50 more expensive on the motherboard side. Now you can get whichever motherboard you want. The whole point I'm trying to convey across here is that if you choose the same model of the motherboard, whether it's Asus ProArt, Asus TOF, MSI, Unify, you name it, ASRock, Tai Chi, something like that, and they get the same chipset on all of them, then that's gonna be roughly the price difference. There will be different price difference on different sockets. The 12700K is the cheapest in the bunch here at $357, and the 12900K is $500, so $60 more expensive than the 13700K, but very interestingly, we'll have to see how these perform because they look very, very similar. For test bench setup, for Intel, we're using the Asus Z690 Pro Art Creator Wi-Fi for the motherboard. And sometimes I had to swap to the Z790i Strix motherboard just because there is some kind of BIOS issues right now with the Z690 motherboards. So if you're running 13th gen and 12th gen, if you swap the CPUs, there's some kind of micro core that messes it up and then just you can't see your SSDs. So I'm swapping them motherboards, but they still perform exactly the same. The settings are the same. So the the board kind of performance difference doesn't matter in here but just so you know. For AMD we're using the X670E Pro Art motherboard. For RAM we're using 2x32GB DDR5 5200 MTS Kingston Fury Beast RGB. The GPU is the same across the board Asus TUF RTX 1390 and the cooler for Intel is Fantex Glacier 1 360mm AIO but I've swapped the fans to Fantex T30 fans just to give it ultimate performance and I've done exactly the same 
on the AMD side, which uses Asus ROG Strix LC2 360mm AIO with the Fantex T30 fans. So both of these coolers are Acer Tech Coolix. They're different brands, but the actual cooling performance is exactly the same. For OS, we're using Cardia C440 on the AMD 7000 side. And on the Intel system, we're using Samsung 980 Pro 1TB model for the OS and 2TB model for the Project SSD. For AMD Ryzen 7000, the MSI M480 Spectrum 2TB SSD is the project drive. For PSU, the AMD Ryzen 7000 and 5000 are using the Corsair HX1000 power supply and Intel is using Deepcool BQ1000M power supply. First of all, the memory controller, which I've mentioned in a lot of videos already, but the memory controller is much better on the 13th gen than on the AMD Ryzen 7000 and the 12th gen. In fact, I talked to one of the Asus um, kind of motherboard engineers and um, people who work there who tests loads of RAM and actually uh, implemented the actual memory uh, test on the BIOS of the Asus things. And he said that he's never seen a better kind of memory controller as the 13th gen is very, very impressive how it actually supports uh, 7,000 plus um, memory as well when it's OC. But in gear one, it supports 5,600 megahertz on the memory controller and mega transfers per second on the RAM. And when you've got four sticks applied, then it's 4,000 mega transfers per second. On the Ryzen 7000, it's 5200 and 3600, which is not impressive with the four sticks. So if you're a creator and you want four sticks of RAM, then Intel looks much better option for you. Even the 12th gen supports 4000 megahertz on the four sticks of RAM compared to 3600 that we have on the AMD. In terms of power consumption, we already mentioned this on the specs a little bit, but I'm working on the ultimate power consumption video where we're actually looking at the workload power consumption. And I've already got some very, very impressive stats in. I need to gather some more things, but believe me, you're gonna want to stay tuned for that because that is really gonna blow your mind that I didn't expect. And I thought the tables are gonna be completely the other way, but it's, it's very interesting. But basically the power consumption here is 100% utilized, but in a workflow setting, this is never 100% utilized. Whether you're a photo editor, video editor, or 3D creative, you're never gonna be utilizing your CPU at 100% all the time. You're gonna be working on it a little bit and then go back to, oh, wait a second, I'll change these settings or I'll go research that online or go quickly, you know, check my social media or something. So to see the power consumption 100% utilized, it only will show you how good of a cooler you need in order to cool it down when you're like 3D rendering or something like that but it doesn't actually show you how much power has been consumed to complete the workflow and how much performance per watt is you know in an actual workload setting looking at Cinebench R23 the 7900X is about 2% slower in the single core score and about 6% slower in the multi core score which is interesting because we have exactly the same amount of threads but AMD has all performance cores where Intel has hybrid architecture. So some of the cores are running much slower than 5.1 gigahertz. The 12900K is about 2.5% slower in the single core performance and about 10.5% slower in the multi-core score which is just insane. The 12700K is five and 25% slower in the single and multi-core score respectively. In Geekbench 5, the 7900X is 8% faster in the single core score, but about 5% slower in the multi-core score. 12900K is 4% slower here in the single core score and 12% slower in the multi-core score. The 12700K is six and 22% slower in the single and multi-core scores respectively. Looking at Blender and that's where usually AMD shines and here we can actually see that those performance cores and threads are actually slightly better than the 13700k. 1.5% faster in monster scene 1% faster in junk shop scene and 2% faster in the classroom scene. Now, not a massive difference, but still, if we are wondering which is better on top of the charts, then AMD 7900X is better here. The 12900K here now, interestingly, check this out. 15.8% slower in the monster scene, 22% slower in the junk shop scene, and 15% slower in the classroom scene. That's ridiculous. It's like a whole generation of improvement. Even the multi-core score in the Cinebench R23 wasn't that much faster. The 12700K is 30, 
to 33% slower in these scenes. So Blender performance is incredibly impressive compared to the other Intel CPUs, but the AMD 7900X is still slightly better. Moving on to Photoshop, and here we can see that the 7900X is 6% slower in the overall score. The 12900K is 7.3% slower in the overall score, and the 12700K is 9.8% slower in the overall score. So for photo editing, the 13700K looks like an amazing CPU if you just want the best bang for buck, as you can see in this chart here. Like the general score is about 10% faster than the 12900K and 11.3% faster than the 7900. In Lightroom Classic, the 7900X is about 1.8% slower, so quite neck to neck over there. The 12900K is a 10% slower, and the 12700K is about 27.9% slower, which is an incredible performance over the different generations, but also, it's not looking so good for 12900K. In Premiere Pro, which is not the favorite for the Ryzen CPUs, the 7900X is 21 and 26% slower in the extended and standard overall scores. But if you look at the extended live playback, which is 42% slower, and the standard live playback, which is 53% slower, it's uh, basically double the performance in terms of the H.264 and 5 video playback on the timeline, which is just due to the iGPU inside the CPU. If you don't know that yet, and you're a video creator, make sure you buy a K version. In fact, not an F version of the CPU, because you can buy a 13700 as well, which will be a very similar thing, because it will have an iGPU. The iGPU and QuickSync will work absolutely amazingly in Adobe Premiere Pro, and it's just absolutely ridiculous, ridiculous performance. As you can see in here, more than double the performance what we get from the 7900X. But if you're looking at the individual scores, the GPU effects and export scores, then interestingly, the extended export score is slightly better on the 13700K, probably because we have more cores, even though we have same threads, but Adobe Premiere Pro must love more cores. And then standard export score, we're really neck to neck over there, but the effects and GPU score are still slightly slower. So the general kind of score is very, very kind of equal with the 7900X, but because of the live playback score of the 13700K is so much better, it gets a huge, huge leap over the 7900X. And if you look at the 12900K, we're really neck to neck over here. The 12900K is 0.07% better. What is it? One point in the actual score better. And the standard overall score, we're actually 1% slower. But if you're looking at this chart over here, we can see that we're really exchanging blows between the 12900K and 13700K. But for some reason, interestingly, in this benchmark, I can't see the 13700K perform as well as the 12900K, even though on the paper, the CPU will run faster, it has more cache, but still, for some reason, it's not as much faster as on the other applications. The 12700K holds on very, very well here and is only 3.8 and 6.9% slower in the extended and standard overall scores. Interestingly, the export score here is 13% slower due to the much lesser cores on the 12700K. In Adobe After Effects, the 7900X is 7% slower in the overall score. The 12900K is 3.6% slower in the overall score and the 12700K is 11% slower in the overall score. Interestingly here, again, for some reason, the newer 13th gen CPUs score slightly slower on the actual GPU score. I don't know why, maybe this is some kind of a newer bug and uh, we need to get for software um, you know, optimization as well. Because even the 12900K, look, the GPU score is 131.5 compared to the 112.6, which is just interesting here. Which to me shows a little bit of a performance increase still in the pocket of the 13700K which can be utilized still in software, but we'll see. I don't know, just interesting analysis. In DaVinci Resolve here, now you can see that the 7900X is 1.23% slower and 7.6% slower in the standard overall score and extended overall score respectively. If you have watched my 7900X review, the separate video, then you might remember that the 13700K didn't have these benchmarks in that uh, um, you know, video. 
and you're absolutely right. I have made absolutely tons of benchmarks over here. When I started to compare these CPUs and compare to the 12900K, especially in this benchmark, I realized that the 13700K and 12900K doesn't quite line up as it lines up in all the other applications. And I ran the 13700K benchmarks again and realized that there was some kind of bug that at first it runs them much slower and then the fusion score is about 100 points lower which maybe just is that windows 11 and just the schedule of this doesn't quite work perfectly with choosing which cores to use whether performance or efficiency cores and sometimes gets confused about that but now these are the real results where i ran them again and realized oh wait a second there's like almost two separate type of scores that i got like i ran the, the test like about 20 times or something like that and you realize okay these are the higher scores and these are the lower scores and then you realize okay the higher scores make sense because then it's more likely in line with all of the up other applications so basically the scores you see on the screens are correct in 8k media score though the 7900x is much much better and this is where ryzen cpus really shine when we're using 8k and raw media then the 16 performance cores or 12 performance cores sorry on this uh, 7900x they're actually much better than the hybrid architecture between the you know efficiency cores and performance cores and that's where we see 35 percent increase in 8k media performance so if you're using over 6k media i'd say and raw then i think the ryzen is a better pick for you but if you're using mixed workflows, then I do think the 13700K is a dark horse in the competition. Interestingly, again, the GPU score is better on the 7900X compared to the 13700K, which again, I'm like, which is exactly the same GPU. Interestingly, one GPU performs better in there than on the 13700K. Maybe, again, because there is the confusion between iGPU and then NVIDIA GPU. The 12900K is 6.2 and 7.9% slower in the extended and standard overall scores. Interestingly here again, the GPU score is higher 4.3% even though we're using exactly the same GPU, the same drivers, the same system. So to me, that GPU effect score, it doesn't make any sense to me because exactly the same GPU. The 12700K is 25% slower in the extended overall score and 28% slower in the standard overall scores. I do want to mention that the 12700K uses DaVinci Resolve 17, which is slightly over benchmark. I still haven't managed to run that through there as well because I've got only one GPU, so it runs like 24 seven these benchmarks and I haven't managed to update that one. So the 12700K basically has still a little bit of performance in the pocket there because the DaVinci Resolve 18 is slightly faster and most of it comes from the fusion scores uh, what I've seen previously. In V-Ray the 7900X is 40% faster than the 13700K. The 12900K is 15% slower and the 12700K is 25% slower. So in 3D applications the AMD CPUs are really really much better just because of the higher cache in the CPUs as well as the more performance cores rather than you know performance and efficiency cores. Now something that might blow your mind which is power consumption and I haven't fully completed the testing here and gathering the data for this but I wanted to pull these two benchmarks out just to show you why these Intel CPUs with the hybrid architecture are actually much more power efficient regardless of the high max power draw at 100% utilization. So basically what we're doing here and what you see on the screen here is power consumption during Photoshop load. I am running the Puget Bench Photoshop benchmark in the background while running hardware info there which records the minimum, maximum and average power consumption during that workload. And the Puget Bench benchmarks are very good for that. So basically it gives the a CPU or the computer system different tasks to do and it actually mixes the idleness and utilization of these tasks to really kind of replicate uh, a workflow of a normal person right you might be doing one thing more or the other thing more but this is just kind of like a kind of 
average workflow that you would do if you do it more or less you know obviously the numbers go up and down but but to see a power consumption during a workload i don't think there is a better standardized workflow that we can get that's as good as the puget bench benchmark for photoshop now what we can see is the 13700k maximum power draw during that workload was 166.8 watts pulled from the socket and the 7900x actually pulled 0.8 percent more which is very very interesting but now the very interesting thing is when we are waiting between the next workflow to come on the 13700k pulls the power right down and the minimum power consumption during that time was 11.6 watts which the 3900x is 363 percent higher right so the minimum power consumption is 53.9 watts on the 7900x which is absolutely ridiculous and there is a problem in the AMD's box in that. Now, not a lot of people talk about the idle power consumption of this, but if you're really wanting the power consumption per watt and per workload, then we really need to talk about this. So when we are looking at the average power consumption, we can see that the 7900X used 81.99 watts on average and the 13700K 54.86 watts on average, which is 50% higher, 49.45% higher on the 7900X, which just shows that if you're using the 13700K, your power bill will be pretty much half of what you will be paying with the Ryzen system, which is actually something that Intel should be using more in the marketing kind of material, because right now the marketing material says that the Intel system uses more power, but the actual reality is that the Ryzen system uses more power. Now, before you write your angry comment, I know that it depends on the workload. For example, if we're looking at Blender or Cinebench R23, then yes, that is that. But if we're looking at Photoshop, video editing, or even some 3D working active project, not so much rendering of the project, but actually actively working on it, then these are the results that we can see. And if you look at Lightroom Classic, which is very, very similar, but there we use a little bit more of the multi-cores in some of the, you know, uh, panoramas or putting photos together or merging photos or exporting photos, we can see that the 13700K pulls much more at 100% utilization, but the minimum power consumption is even lower than in Photoshop. So looking at the 7900X, the maximum power draw is 12% lower, which is good, but the minimum power consumption is 483% higher. That's 4.8, almost five times higher than Intel's, which equates to 65% higher power consumption during the Photoshop workload which is just absolutely insane. I have still to do uh, the video editing in Premiere Pro as well and some of the other CPUs and I'd like to know if the 13th gen is more efficient than the 12th gen and so on. But just to kind of show you how good the hybrid architecture is and why I do think that the hybrid architecture actually has a future and why it is the future because we all want lower energy bills especially me here in the UK, the energy prices are going right through the roof. To have a CPU that actually saves you energy while it gets more work done, doesn't matter that it uses sometimes more energy in bursts, but overall uses much less power. That's just absolutely amazing. I'd love to know what you think about it in the comment section below. And if you'd like to see the full video of this, hit subscribe if you haven't yet. So in conclusion, looking at the 13700K, now we realize that it completely destroys the 12900K and Intel's kind of shot himself in the foot here and they have to lower the price of the 12900K because it's not as good, but it's more expensive and it should be cheaper than the 13700K. But just because of the mar marketing and people's mindset, we think i9 is better than the i7, people are probably gonna buy the i9. But the i7 13700K is actually better in every single way. It's just, it's just better. So now looking at the competition as well for photo editing, I think it's better to go with the Intel system just because it just offers more performance. 
for the money and less power consumption now as we see as well the same with video editing the 13700k is much better than the 7900x from Verizon but here I do want to mention that if you are working with a lot of raw files perhaps you are using a lot of the cinema cameras like uh, Canon RAW, RED RAW, other cinema camera RAW from 6K+, plus, then perhaps the 7900X is a better performer for you just because it has more of the performance cores. I'd love to see Intel to get more than eight performance cores into their CPU because they keep adding the efficiency cores, but we're still on eight performance cores. The 10th gen i9 had 10 performance cores, but uh, then we've dropped down to eight performance cores until this point. We need more performance cores. So I do think that going at that point, the performance will be better on the 7900X when you're using raw 6K plus type of um, you know, workflow. If you are mixed and 4K, maybe up to 6K, sometimes, you know, some of the raw codecs you're using, then the 13700K is a better pick just because it has more cores. It's got iGPU inside, timeline performance with the H.264 and five codecs will be much, much better. In terms of 3D, obviously the overall performance will be better on the Ryzen CPUs and absolutely I think you should go for it. But I think you should also consider whether you're doing more rendering or more kind of working on the active projects, maybe like sculpting and something like that. That doesn't need that much um, CPU power and perhaps you want to load the rendering of the power over to the GPU. I know, just think about your workflow. I'm just representing the facts for you and then you can make the decision over there. And another conclusion here is the power consumption. Think about what is your workflow? What type of things do you do? and then see which is better power consumption CPU for you as well. Because if you're truly looking at the price to performance difference, we also should be kind of putting the ele electricity cost into that equation as well, which you can see here now, Intel is absolutely killing it over the Ryzen. And that's why it's another dark horse of the CPU race over here. If you want to pick up the CPU, check it out in the description below for the latest pricing. Perhaps in the holiday season, it'll have even bigger discounts so you can buy it even cheaper. Or check out the 12900K, make sure that that is cheaper than the 13700K, otherwise it's not worth buying. And if you do want to build yourself a Creator PC, check out the best bank for Creator PC build guide in the description below. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.